Intro music. <laughs> A star for the ages for Tony Gwynn, number 3,000. They have acquired Eric Johnson and Fernando Tatis Jr. from the White Sox in exchange for James Shield. <laughs> My name is Joey. My name is James. And this is the Brothers Padre. And in this uh, episode, thing that we're doing. Can we be, can, like, is it a bit if it's every episode's a bad episode? <laughs> it's not a bad episode. Actually, I have several things I want to talk about that I, I think are good. Oh. It. You're saying something good about the. 78 and 78 San Diego Padres who have been mathematically eliminated from the playoffs? Yep. Okay. The, the team that I, I boldly claimed at the beginning of the season was going to win the World Series. Yeah, you did boldly claim it. And if we did anything less than the um, World Series, go to the World Series, it would be a disappointing season. Uh-huh. I think we can check the tape on that. We're not going to, but I'm pretty sure someone else Oh, could. I'm pretty sure I remember saying it. <laughs> uh, I might have clipped it and was going to use it as like, aha, I predicted it. Yeah. But, uh, yeah. Uh, the thing to say, we, we did less. It's bad. Mm-hmm. It's been a, it's been a rough, rough set of games, James. Very, very rough series. Uh, so, just a little bit of housekeeping. We couldn't record after the Giants series. Life got away from us, and I basically said, I can't record sometimes, so we didn't record. So, sorry, everybody. That's on me. But also, Joey's in the process of moving right now. Maybe moving. Who maybe. knows? Who knows? Moving hearts and minds, James. Okay. Right. <laughs> um, uh, in our defense, though, the games were awful to recap. So This is true. So um, I'm, We're just going to go through it, talk about it a little bit. Have some feelings, and then we're gonna, we're gonna, because this Sunday was the last home game of the entire twenty one season. James and I were in attendance, and we're gonna go over some of our favorite moments from the Petco Park. Not Which, necessarily, definitely, probably not uh, baseball moments, but more Petco Park moments. Yes, sound like a good time, James. Sounds like a great time. Sunday Padres, welcome to town. Two teams this past week: the San Francisco Giants and the Atlanta Braves. James. You know that the last time we played Atlanta Braves, you remember what happened? We swept them. Yeah, but one game got suspended. And so technically, we have played a road game also this week, but it also was at our home. Very confusing. But let's recap the first series. Giants came to town and took 2 out of 3 from us. Uh, on Tuesday night game, we lost 5 to 6. On Wednesday night's game, we lost 6 to 8. On Thursday's game, we won uh, 8 to 7. And yes, the Padres battled this series, right? Like, we, our offense legitimately kept us in it, but our bullpen now can't get out. Can't get out. Um, we're tired. Um, the Giants knew Mark Lanson well, so played off him very well. And uh, we have a guy named Vince Velasquez that is a stopgap because two of our starters are injured. One is out for the rest of the season. Chris Paddock is out the rest of the season. Blake Snell is hoping to come back, but because of those two guys are out, we had to stopgap them with bullpen games, Jake Arrieta, Vince Velasquez, and those guys aren't good. Vince Velasquez has an okay start later on this week, but I don't know what we expected, really. I think yeah. we expected just pure miracle. Yes. And I, don't think, I don't think you and I actually expected that. I think... No, after the, it, after the St. Louis series, we're like, oh, it's over. It's over. Definitely. Over. It's yeah. over, over. <laughs> Any thoughts about the Giants and... Uh, um... No. Other than our offense, the thing that's frustrating because we scored a lot of runs against the uh, Braves as well. If we had this offense in the month of September, uh, month of August... Oh, it's a completely different season. We, we, we would be in the playoffs still because yeah. our offense died. And now all of a sudden we can score six runs a game. Yeah, it it it, it, it that's very frustrating. That is very very frustrating to watch. Um, but good for the Giants. I is it bad that for the last six games we played three games in um, L A. L A. and three games in San Francisco. I want to win at least two games from the from the um, Dodgers and get swept by the um, Giants just so the Giants could win the National yeah. League. 
I don't like either of those scenarios, but if I were to choose one team to hate more, it would always be the Dodgers. Yes. <laughs> if we could somehow guarantee the Giants winning the division and stopping the, the Dodgers, it would be great. So a little bit of landscaping, not landscaping, a little bit of landscape about the league right now. The St. Louis Cardinals um, have won 17 games in a row. So the good the good thing about that is even if the Padres were 50-50 <laughs> we would still this win. last couple of weeks, we would still be mathematically eliminated. Uh, is, it, is it 16 or 17? Sorry, 16. My bad. 16 games in a row. They are hotter than hot. Um, and so there is a world in which a 100-win Dodger team has to face the hottest team in baseball, St. Louis Cardinals, in a one-game playoff. And you know who, you know, what's crazy? And he's going to be at Dodger Stadium, right? And Nolan Arenado and Paul Goldschmidt both own like one of the top five slugging percentages of visitors in Dodger Stadium history. I know, dude. It, 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 I would hate if I was a Dodger right now. Really, this is what we're facing. We're going to see Adam Wainwright, Yadier Molina, which are whatever, but they're they are effective. But and but mostly Arenado and Goldie, who just love hitting in that ballpark. Man, that sucks. That sucks. That, that, that sucks. <laughs> but that's the hope. Um, and then we're going to see the Dodgers eliminated in the wild card game. That'd be cool. That would be very. Uh, that would be ideal. Um, so that's kind of the landscape. It looks like pretty. I mean, as of right now, the the um, Cardinals looking on the app right now are five and a half games above the Reds. So basically, they're one win away from. Securing a guaranteed wild card spot. It's wild that a week ago, four teams within like two games, and then the yes, and the Reds like, oh, we're never going to lose. FYI, <laughs> we're just never going to lose. Yeah, the Cardinals are insane. Oh, no, the Cardinals, yeah, yeah, yeah. Like we're never going to lose. But yeah, that's kind of the picture of it. Um, and then the Atlanta Braves came to town, and they're like, actually, we want to, um, we want to maintain the AL East lead, and we want to keep it, and we want to go to the playoffs. And so um, they came into town on Friday, Saturday, and Sunday. Friday's game, James, was a fun one because there was two games on Friday. Because, um, as aforementioned, it was delayed. There was a suspended game because of rain in Atlanta. Because Atlanta Braves, people had no idea how to manage games. That whole, that whole series was awful. So it suspended a game, and we finished the game. So the Padres came into the game with a 5-4 lead. And we beat them six to five in a seven inning game, a road game, a two inning game, finishing a seven inning right, game. Right, right, right. Um, and things were looking up. Fernando, Fernando Tatis Jr. hit his forty first home run, second most in uh, Padres history for a single season home run leader, tying with uh, Phil Nevin and Adrian Gonzalez. Yep, right? yep. It's very cool. He's I mean he's already a legend in Padres history, but he just he statistically now also up with those guys. It's cool. It's a cool thing to see. And things are looking up, and then the Braves beat us the next three games. Uh, we got a shutout. Um, Max Freed threw a Maddox, which is a sub-100 pitch shutout, um, pitching all nine innings. And the Padres grounded 18 ground ball outs, which was exactly what we thought the Padres were doing earlier. And they did it again. And then on Saturday, we lost 8-10. to 10, um, into, went, went to extra innings. Because our bullpen cannot once again hold on to a lead. A game in which Manny Machado, heard of him? The yeah. best player with bases loaded. Like, why even just intentionally walk Manny Machado with bases loaded, right? It makes the most sense. The dude is has now 12 career grand slams. He hasn't even played 10 full years in baseball. Like, just don't just don't pitch to him. He, he, has, a, he has a 400 plus batting average with bases loaded. Pitch, yeah. just, just not a, don't, don't pitch to him. Just don't. Despite him hitting a grand slam, and uh, we still lost because once again our bullpen cannot hold down games. We're tired. The burden of life is coming down on us. The sands of time, James. They're just sprinkling down the hourglass slowly. Yeah, yeah. Continue. <laughs> <laughs> and Sunday, the last home game of the year. You and I were in attendance. Vibes were good. Like the Padres fans were there to support the team. Yes. And honestly, 
if there's a real MVP of the season, and this is going to sound cheesy because I'm I'm a, I'm part of this group of people I'm about to say is the real MVP, the fans really brought it this year. They really, really were there for the team. Every this game did not matter at this point. In Sunday, we're mathematically eliminated, right? This is, does didn't matter. No, it did not. But people went crazy. People were like. Cronenworth had two doubles and a triple. Manny Machado got some RBIs. And like that, we scored three inning, three runs in a single inning. Everyone went crazy for that in the bottom of the fifth. Like this is this was a very hyped crowd. Um, and then the bottom of ninth, bases were loaded, James, with Tatis coming up. People went crazy. Like this is it. This is gonna be the this is gonna be a cool moment. Didn't really matter. Because the umpire had a strike zone super wide and stole the bats away from both Fernando Tatis Jr. and Trent Grisham. So and that's how the game ended. Yeah. Four to three. And that's like the most fitting end of a very disappointing home season. Um, there's still six games left, Shane, but you said three against the Dodgers, three against the Giants. We'll be watching. We'll be recapping. Because that's what we do. We're, we're, I'm not not going to cheer for Fernando to hit more home runs. This I'm not yeah. gonna. I'm, I'm at, gonna. I'm gonna. I want May Machado to hit another grand slam. As of right now, I want them to pad them stats, dude. Yeah. As of right now, Fernando has to get to 100 RBIs. Yeah. And I want to see him get to at least 45 home runs. Oh yeah, baby. And, he loves and, hitting Dodger Stadium. He loves hitting Dodger Stadium, and and I think the Padre players are going to be ticked off that they're not they're not in the playoffs, and they'll have something to show. And it would be great if we could. Take two out of three from the Dodgers. Yep. Man, oh man, James. Um, what kind of a this this kind of like a petering out awful homestand to end of the year? But that's that's fitting, I guess, right? It 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 perfectly s- sums up our our season. We had so much. This is the best team. The Padres have ever put on the field on paper. From a pure talent ceiling perspective, 100%. Yeah. And we'll dive into probably next episode where the Padres went wrong, what happened, and then we'll recap the whole season after the season's over. But right now, we want to talk about, because Joey and I have been blessed, (laughs) what? You're giggling over there? (laughs) <laughs> Just go ahead, sorry. <laughs> go ahead. Okay. I, I, I heard I heard blurst and bless. I miss I I don't know. Mispronunciations make me giggle and they shouldn't. So I apologize. <laughs> Dick. <laughs> <laughs> Anyways, so Joey and I have been fortunate enough to go to several home games this year. And I want to talk about what our most positive and best experiences at the ballpark this year have been? Yeah, yeah, I'm, I'm, in, I'm ready. All right, go. How, how many should we share, James? Should we do two piece, three a piece, or just let's just keep me jamming? Yeah, it's just yeah. I'll start off. Okay. Um, it is a Wednesday night in Petco Park. It's the eighth inning. The Padres are down thirteen runs. <laughs> It's 15 to 2. There might be 5,000 people left in the park, right? You were there. Yeah, I was there. <laughs> Somehow we're still there. And then the the national play, the national at the time, we're a day earlier from one of the craziest games this year, which we'll definitely talk about. But this game, we're being destroyed. Chris Paddock has, hasn't had his turnaround yet, he's just being destroyed. And I was, and we're sitting in our seats, and there's, there's, there's the, the person that we sit next to often. He was, he's there, right? Yeah. <laughs> and no one else is around us. <laughs> but then the Padres start to rally in the ninth inning. I just remember just having a pure like fan experience because we're down thirteen runs, but we we get three runs. And I'm like, I'm having a time in my life. I go, uh oh. We were cheering <laughs> so hard. You would think that for those 5,000 people left the stadium, you would think it was yeah. the last game of the World Series. <laughs> I was pretty stoked. 
And then I saw, I mean, it was the game. It was just a fun fan experience because just like this is what baseball is about. Like it's just a fun. You're cheering for humans to do crazy human things. And it was just it was a fun time. It was a very fun time because how silly the moment was, you know. And it was just fun. That was that's that, that was definitely something I'll remember about Petco Park. <laughs> that's yeah. a good memory. Uh, I, I would think my first like. Just the first game we went back to the game. So that, that first day, you and I went, having not seen a single game all the previous year because of COVID, That's and right. walking into the ballpark, everybody was so just happy to be there. Yeah. And this was the first Wednesday game, I think. I can't. It was the first Sunday game. I can't. So I, I don't remember now. They, opening day had people, mm-hmm. right? Yes. We didn't go opening day. I think we went the first Sunday, the first Wednesday game. Yes. We didn't, was, we didn't go opening day. We didn't right. go opening weekend. We went the Wednesday after right, opening right, weekend. Right, right, right. And that, even a, it was that crowd, everyone was just so happy to be out. Everyone was yep. just so happy to see baseball. Everyone was just so happy to see these Padres. And everyone was cheering. Yep. It was, that, that was my first memory of the ballpark. It still sticks out. Yeah. Just how everybody was just, everyone was still a little nervous because we hadn't right. we hadn't we hadn't socialized. People still don't know how to act. But we were just we'll talk about that a little bit. We were yeah, <laughs> we were just all so happy to be there and yeah. just so happy to and to love baseball again. Oh yeah, it, it, uh, that, that's first memory. We'll never forget just how even it was what was that third capacity or something like that. Yeah yeah yeah. People cheered like it was sold out. People were screaming. Oh, yeah. People were so happy just to be let out and to see the Padres because yeah. we didn't have a chance to. I think that's another thing. We were we went to the playoffs last year and no one had a chance to cheer for right. them. And everyone was right. making it for lost time. It was great. Yeah, I mean, I, the Padres fans definitely brought it. Um, yeah, those third capacity crowds were loud. They were very loud. They were they were bopping. Um, yeah, we, I think those are interesting to think looking back at that was interesting too, because yeah, I, I just, I never, I, I never felt like it was, yeah, never really felt like it was lacking energy. It was everyone just brought their air game that whole time. And then when it became full capacity, then it was like, oh man, this is mania. <laughs> yeah, that was, that was truly mania. <laughs> those, those red games, those red games were gnarly. Um, my father-in-law went to the first full capacity game. He's like, that was insanity. I've never seen that, like that level of just like 40,000 people jumping up and down on Thursday night downtown. (laughs) It's just like, and then we won that game in dramatic fashion. So it added. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, that's, We'll talk about in like this when we recap the actual game. That's definitely one of the top five games of the year. Absolutely, yeah. absolutely. Um, but it's man, it's it, it, it was cool. It was cool to see Padres fans. Like Padres fans love the Padres. Like most Padres fans know that about other Padres fans. But it's just like good. Like oh, we really like if you give us a storyline to support, you, they'll come out. Kids will come out. And, I mean, it, and that's the cool thing. It was just seeing so many people come out and you know enjoy the ball game and. That was really cool. Yeah. Yeah. Do you have another uh, memory? Yeah, I have lots of t- stories, and we're gonna tell some of them. And I, this is where it gets like, we've seen some wild things at Petco Park this year. <laughs> like, people like didn't know how to socialize at first. Like, people, there were some rowdy people this year, James. Yes. Um, this is not necessarily game related. Um, my wife and I went to a game. And we're leaving the game. We won. It was a Dodgers game where um, um, Blake Snell faced Jake, uh, Trevor Bauer. Jake Cronworth hit the game-winning home run. Like, not the game-winning home run, but the run that allowed for the game to win. We won, right? And as we're like, you know, we're in a parking lot waiting for... Have I not told this story on the podcast? I must. I don't know. Regardless. So I'm, we're waiting to leave the parking lot. And then in the corner of my eye, I see... What we'll be referencing a lot, when James and I say a brouhaha, what we mean by that is a fight. <laughs> <laughs> so, 
a brouhaha. <clears throat> I would say a brouhaha isn't a full fight yet. Brouhaha is... A brouhaha is, is uh, puffing of chests. Right. And that's a good description of a baseball fight in general when benches clear. Most of the time it's just like, we're just clearing the benches and be like, oh, I'm me, I'm better than you, and that's oh, it. Yeah. Brouhaha's can become violent. And so they're very, you still have to pay attention to brouhaha's. So anyway, so I'm, 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 I'm leaving, I'm leaving the Petco Park and I see Korma and I, a Dodgers couple, have a brouhaha with a Padres couple. And there's really tense words. The husband of the Dodgers couple, like pushing the girl inside his car, in their car, but then he comes out and try to attack the Dodge, the, the, the cup, the Padres wife, the couple, the wife of the couple, the Padres fans. And it's, it's, it's about, it actually is about to get physical. Now, the corner of my other eye, I see this well-tanned Southern Californian, might be homeless, Jason Momoa guy. Like, he's ripped. Very strong. And he is booking it towards this brouhaha, this almost fight. I'm like, oh, shoot. We're going to see some real bloodshed. <laughs> <laughs> and I'm like, I can't go anywhere. So <laughs> I'm stuck in my car. I'm like in a long line. And I was like, this guy wants to fight. This guy's just, you know. He just off the street and literally wants to fight. He runs in. He steps in front of the guy and he starts playing the peacemaker. He starts being like, "No, man, you gotta calm down." Dude. Like he's he's totally putting his hands up, using soft language, just like calming fears down. And we're like, my wife and I are like, "What? This is not what we expected at all." This is... Jason Momoa was who smoked a little bit of weed is saving the day. <laughs> and you know, and it just goes to show, don't. Don't judge a book by its cover, kids. That's what that story told. And it also shows that Dodger fans are psychotic and yeah. Padre fans are good people. <laughs> and and when a Padre fan can be relaxed and yeah. um, clarify their argument, Dodger fans have to wilt because they're lesser intelligence. Wow. There it is. That's there what it is. is right there. there. It is. <laughs> that was a fun moment. It was like, it was a fun, I think because it was such a human moment. And I haven't had many of those, like most people in this world, the past 18 months. So it was, it was, at that point, it was like still very early. And we're like, oh, this is this is crazy. You forgot people could be outside and be nice to each right, other. Right, right. Yeah. yeah and, and, and also, like, put themselves in conflict to calm everyone down. It was it was very nice. It was very nice. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That, that's yeah. a nice moment. Yeah. My, my next thing, this sounds kind of a weird thing, but I don't know. I've discovered I love... The left field lemonade that we sell at Petco Park. The lane field lemonade? Lane field lemonade, yeah. 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 I, I'm it, not a big lemonade guy, but I, I trust you. It, it's it's quite good. Yeah. I tried it. Like, you know, this is these booths are all over the place. Uh-huh. They're always busy. I'm going to try it. Want, you know what? This is... This is really good. It's worth the calories. It really is. And <laughs> I think it's just one of those things to discover that you like. It already has some of the best food and beverages. Oh yeah. At the pet, at Petco, and there's this one little stand. I'm like, wow, this is this is worth getting. And it just it, it was again nice to be there. Uh, but in a more serious, like me, not not more serious, but a different, <laughs> a different another thing. I'll, I, I'll add one more beverage thing before we move on. Petco Park is now selling plastic bats you can drink beer out of. The novelty is pretty cool. There's no way they last. They last because people break them often, and they're like they're they're weapons. You're giving people a weapon. <laughs> <laughs> they're a plastic bat for pity's sakes. I told uh, my other brother who went with me last time. That what I expect now in the right field bleachers, because you know about this, the cup snake that happens in games where people like try to collect all the empty cups and make a big long snake of it. Yeah, like a bleacher game. I actually want a bleacher wiffle ball baseball game up here with those plastic bats. Oh, right? that'd be great! And just you see people hitting hitting little like hot dog wrappers back and forth with each other. <laughs> yeah, those aren't gonna last. They're literally weapons. <laughs> they literally are yeah, weapons. those those those. Aren't gonna last. <laughs> <laughs> I got to meet Mark Sweeney on the last game of the year. Oh, that's pretty cool. Yeah, that's pretty cool. I've, I've 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 interacted with a few times before. He was walking down the hallway. I said, "Mark yeah. Sweeney, I love you, man." High fived, yeah. and yeah. and I said, Are "You're doing a great job." He said, "Thank you." And yeah, that was nice to meet Mark. I've always liked Mark Sweeney. Yeah. Mark Sweeney is. Very nice guy. What was that? He's a very nice guy. Very nice guy. He's also 
our oldest sister's favorite player of all time. Yeah, true. Just she's loved Mark Sweeney. Yeah, and it was it was nice. That was nice to meet him. It was to, it just the general feel of the ballpark on last Sunday's game. Even though it was still very positive, even though everything happened, like you said, it was still very positive, and oh. that was very encouraging to see. I mean, people were up and about the yes. bottom ninth. People were in the moment. They were not. They want. They want to see a big hit. They want to see it. Um, yeah, it was. I think it's the Padres fans aren't gonna are still gonna come. They're still gonna be bring their support, which is a good thing. Well, we hit two million attendance. Yep. And that's usually the benchmark for a decent season of any year. Right. And that, and remember, half the season was at Th- third capacity. Third capacity. We hit two million with third capacity. No, here's a, here's an interesting stat. No other team in the West Coast has done that. Giants haven't done it. The Dodgers haven't done it. Yep. The Rockies and the um, the Diamondbacks haven't done it. We've done it because our fans are the best. And we're loyal, and even though we were mathematically eliminated, yeah, you pat yourself in the back there. Uh, <laughs> even though we, we were eliminated, we it was almost sold out show on Sunday, and it was great. No, it was a sellout. It was it was forty one thousand people. So I mean, it was awesome. It was I had a great time. I, it, the Petco is a fun baseball park to be in. Yeah, James, we're saying all these things. We're not talking about the one night. The one night that, on upon reflection. We will remember more things that happened in the ballpark. But since this happened on Wednesday night. James called me. He's like, hey, I have a pair of tickets. Do you want to come with me? And I'm like. It's Star Wars theme night. There's going to be kids. There's going to be cosplayers. And there was all of that. And I was like, you know what? I'm a nerd. I like Padres games. In between every inning, they played Star Wars music. It was a thing. And I was like, okay, this sounds like. I'm a family man, James. I have a family. And so start- I, have, I, have a, I have an expectation of the events I go to. It has to be that level of things, James. And Star Wars Night has I have been delicate, a thing. Delicate sensibility. See, I, I have been to Star Wars <laughs> Nights before because very few people remember, but we used to have a player named David Eckstein on our team. Oh, I know David Eckstein. David Eckstein, decent enough infielder. I believe he's a coach somewhere now. But they started doing Star Wars theme night because his wife, Ashley Eckstein, was the voice and still is the voice in the animated Star Wars shows of Ahsoka Tano. Yep. And so it just became like this whole thing of like all of our bullpen guys had Star Wars backpacks. And it was, and so they just right. decided, let's make it a Star Wars theme night. And I was at the first one. It was great. And I've been to several of them now, and they're all great. I'm a huge Star Wars fan. And I thought, Joey, come ex- you've never been to one. Come experience this great night. There, it's like being at Comic Con and baseball at the same time. Two of my great loves and and other things took place. It was the rowdiest night I've ever been to at Petco Park. It was, it was. I, I was just flabbergasted how rowdy it was. It was again. It was thirty nine thousand people were there, so it was yeah. almost sold out. Right. By playing the, the Giants. Playing the Giants by the seventh inning. I would say a quarter of the crowd was left, and they didn't leave. They didn't lose. They didn't leave because we were losing. They left because the crowd was so rowdy. You could watch. We were sitting there. And you could watch like the little, um, like the, 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 the little red shirt security guys running. You would see a bunch of them up, up uh, they're all up that those bleachers, and they, there's a bunch over here. There's a bunch over here. They're just running everywhere. Several times, the elite security guards run past us, like yelling to their mics. There, there was there was craziness happening. Um, so we were in right field, and I and I have I, I mean, no disrespect to anyone that sits in the outfield. This is not. I'm not shaming you and what you like to do, but. It is kind of the worst place to sit, but not just because weird people sit there, but just whatever. I have, I have, I have things without the outfield, but my goodness, we're sitting there and everyone stands up and looks around section over a Giants fan, and a Potter fan get into it. Not just one of them is on the top of the bleachers. Right. The other's on the bottom of the bleachers. <laughs> yeah. 
Padre fan is throwing full cups of liquid and dousing everybody. He gets ejected. He gets ejected. And the Giants fan's like, I'm going to do the same thing. But no, he has suddenly an endless supply of empty beer cans, and he's <laughs> chucking them up and throwing them at the water guys, fa- a family of friends, and he gets kicked out. I'm like, that must be the end of it. That's got to be it. And then, then some nitwit jumps on the sta- field... And he, he, you, you can just tell when a guy wants to start a fight. He jumped on the field and he was ready to start a fight. I have never seen security guards tackle a guy so hard. It, it was aggressive. And they were aggressively punching him in the kidneys. I mean, he was, he was, he was fighting them. He was like, he was trying to, he was fighting them. And he, he was, was definitely fighting them. And when they were trying to carry him off, he kept like kicking the door frame so they wouldn't let him in. <laughs> And they had to like they had to like t- oh, they had to retackle him. It was an aggressive takedown, and you would think that would be the end of it. No, no, no. Another section over. Six, seven people had a huge fight. It looked like six women started attacking a Samoan gentleman, and and you would That's think that's a random detail, but whatever. I, but, well, no, the whole idea is like they were all like. Five foot tall, and they were attacking a giant of a man. Right, and right. he was just waving his wrist around and knocking these women over. And you would think, well, they got to get the guy out. No, he got to stay, and they escorted all the women out. So whatever happened, what were the women starting? Not I just don't. St- it, I, I, it just was like one of those things that, like, I thought it was like as. Dar said, I thought this was a family show. I thought this was a family show. Yeah. It wasn't. It was. It was. It was like I was in the midst of Pompeii. It was like... <laughs> then we had some giant fan in our section who was aggressively sick. <laughs> was yeah. drinking a lot of alcohol. And... and Oh, I mean, yeah. And this... Yeah, I don't know. And and what was in this? The 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 the, the moment that it went from... Where Joey kept on giving me a hard time was, I believe it was the seventh inning. The, you know, in between innings, they're showing the crowd... A woman showed the crowd her mammary glands, and now the point I looked James like, "What do you? What? What is this place? Yeah, <laughs> what is this place? Like, I'm a family man." The whole crowd. Then after that, it was pretty funny because then every time they cut to the crowd, several people were fake flashing the crowd. It was pretty funny. <laughs> so wild. It was. It just it's a Wednesday in September. The Half weir- the crowd was in Star Wars costumes. <laughs> it was wild. It was the wildest. It was the wildest game. I mean, it it could have been the full moon, but I don't know. I don't know. I, it was wild. It was it was absolutely wild. Um, and yeah, I mean, that's kind of why we had to go to Sunday's game. We had to, like, to go to a, a, a palate cleanser, of a, a palate game. cleanser <laughs> of a decent. Like, oh look, Padre fans aren't always crazy. They're actually, I, I you know what? As good as the crowd Padres are, one game a year of being nuts. We can give them. We can, we can give our Padre fans and oh, us. Oh, man. You know, we only saw one. I can only remember one ejection all year we saw besides that one night where we saw tons. Yes. I think that night we saw at least a dozen people get banned for life in baseball. It was bananas. I've never seen that many elite people take that many people away. And legitimately, you would, we were sitting there and we were, we were sitting in right field and we look over in the bleachers above third base and all of a sudden there's a whole pile of elite guys yeah and i have a friend of mine whose uh family was there and, um below that section because they were a bunch of people because they were throwing things down on the crowd they were like throwing trash and peanuts down on everybody it it was wild just wild i just i don't know man wild nights in petco dude I don't know if I could ever sit in right field again. <laughs> I don't, don't think so either. It, it was a nutty, nutty, but it wasn't just right field. Yes, yeah. ours is where most of the violence happened, but they were everywhere. Man. Well, I mean, but all all that being said, ninety nine percent of our experiences this year have been positive. <laughs> well, I mean, yeah, yeah, <gasps> yeah, ninety nine percent for sure. <laughs> it, it was a crazy, but we still got to, I guess, still got to hang out with my brother. Yep. We still got to have fun baseball times. No, it was, I had an overwhelmingly fun time at Petco yeah. this year. I mean, I, I mean, yeah. Petco's staff responded to so many things that went their way. Like, 
Petco staff was like the first full capacity game I went to. They were like they were like deer in the headlights. Like we haven't worked this hard in nineteen months. Yeah. <laughs> like we don't know what we're doing. <laughs> we forgot what a crowd is. Which is like, <laughs> um, yeah. It, I mean, it was overwhelmingly like a very positive experience. It was just cool to see people be into baseball at that level. And it was it was I mean, like you said, very positive. And I'm excited. I mean, I am excited to go back next year. It's it's always tough to. Remember, it, you're not going to see baseball, Padres baseball at home again for another five, six months. But although the, the, how, how disappointing this season is, I read a, uh, a quote online. Yes, the Padres might finish under 500. We still during a half capacity, half um, half capacity year, managed to get two million people to watch. A team that they loved. Yep. And cheered for them. And we're, and San Diegans were immensely entertained. So, yes, we're not in the playoffs, but you can't complain by the experience at Petco Park this year and what the fans and what everyone in the world has gone through. The Padres have been able to show San Diego a, a funner, a better time. It'd just be better if they won. <laughs> Well, James, there's no better way to end than that. We're on Apple Podcasts. We're on Spotify. We're on wherever good podcasts are found. We're on Only Twitter. good ones. Only good ones. Anybody that went to Wednesday Night Games for a podcast. <laughs> Lady Flasher, we don't want to listen to your podcast. You're not a good podcast. <laughs> we're on Twitter at Brothers Padre James. And uh, until next time, we're, we're going to recap the Dodgers series and the Giants series also. Go Padres. Go Padres. And there it is. Oh, doctor. You can hang a star on that, baby. So I apologize. <laughs> Dick. <laughs> <laughs>